Here I've got the uh, finished gauges that I've been putting together for my Omega Squirt on my Celica. Um, I'll give you a, a little bit of a walk around first. Back here I have a Omega Squirt 2 that's putting out all of its data over CAN, uh, which is Controller Area Network. Uh, the uh, Mega Stim here is driving that, just simulating an engine. We've got power coming in here uh, from the wall plug there. These two, the blue and purple, are your can high and low. These two, red and black, are um, power that comes out of here to go over to the gauges. Um, I've got all of this going into this little harness here. This is my ECU that I put together. Um, this on top here is a GPS unit that will be driving the speedometer. Underneath there is a can uh, transceiver chip. On this side, we have a Teen C 3.2. Um, your can, your can information comes in from the Mega Squirt from the right side there in the video. This Teen C takes all that information, digests it, decides what to do with it, and then sends it out. On this side, where my hand is, uh, sends it out over I two C or I squared C. And this cable is what comes out here to um, the gauges, and I'll show you that in a minute. So, I have the same data going to both the tachometer and the speedometer right now, so the needles are just going to be moving to the same uh, position. I've also converted the, uh, the factory odometer to run with a stepper motor so that it will drive the odometer forward as well. I don't yet have the odometer completely calibrated, so it's not accurate. You know, at uh, 60 miles an hour, it should take one minute to go. It's close, but I haven't... I haven't calibrated it completely. Um, you can see as I go faster, the odometer goes faster as well. And I can clear the trip meter just like I normally would you know, when it's in your car. And then as you keep going, oh, and of course it gets stuck during the video. Um, I'm not sure why that got stuck. Hmm. Oh well, I'll look into it. Um, but so, I've got a stepper motor behind these gauge faces that I've installed in there using the factory mounts and stuff that was in there. Uh, this is a little module here that I built. Um, you've got on there a MSP430 is the main computer chip on there. There's really f very few... Uh, components on here. We've got a power or a voltage regulator, a diode on there. This one isn't fully assembled because I don't yet have the connectors on there. Um, but there's a reset switch, your MSP430. Uh, this is a G2553 that I have on there. It's a Switek motor that I have here on the back. This is used in pretty much every GM car for the last, I don't know, many, many years. Um, I got them on eBay. They're like a dollar a piece. You can get them pretty cheap. Um, but I've got two LEDs on there that I can use for um, what I call a heartbeat while it's communicating, the heartbeat is on, and you'll see that a little bit later on. Um, but so, if I take this off, you will see that it's just, um, you know, here on the back side, you can see the cables, and the way... The way I squared C works, the communication that I'm using on this, every one of these boards has um, two connectors on it. So one connector comes in with the I squared C data and power, and then all of that's just you know just shorted straight over to this connector, so this can come out and go over to the next gauge. So right here, we just have our data that comes in on this line. You know, go. This is the speedometer. Come. All the same stuff comes out of here, which goes over to the odometer, which is here on the side, and I'll show you this a little bit later. Um, then coming out of there, comes over here to this one, which is the tachometer. And you can see inside there, the blinking red lights, that's just the heartbeat, um, saying that it's communicating properly, um, just as I use during troubleshooting when it's all put together. That won't be on, just because that would be annoying to have flashing in the dash. Um, so I'll take it apart and show you. Here's the speedometer unit disassembled. 
So um, I have a super capacitor on it. That's what that big round blue thing is. Uh, the super capacitor gives it a little bit of juice after it um, shuts down so that it'll uh, pull the needle back to zero uh, when you turn off the key. So with a speedometer, you should be stopped, but with a tachometer, you'll still be idling. And so if you were just to shut it off, your needle would stop wherever you were idling at. So this just, that'll ensure that it pulls to zero. Um, so there you can see the stepper motor that I have driving the odometer. And so as I speed it up here, you can see that it goes faster. And as I slow it down, it just really moves down to a crawl. Um, but that's all controlled over the same thing. Um, I had to lengthen the needle or the, uh, yeah, no, the shaft for the needle on here. Um, it's a brass needle, brass shaft that I had to go up there to get it so that I could fit that in there with the original odometer assembly and mechanicals. Um, but so then the needle comes up there and, and there you can see the trip meter is working again. But so the, your wire just comes in one and comes back out the other and then it would come out of that one and go off, you know, that cable right there would then go into the tachometer. This will also work in similar principle for the uh, fuel gauge and the temp gauge. I haven't spent much time um, on this one since my very first rudimentary designs, but it'll be pretty much the exact same type of thing there. I've got a choice of a bunch of different needles, so I've got these, I've got some red ones, um, I've got some orange ones, that one's obviously too short, but I do have the right size. Um, I'm kind of liking these white ones the best. You can see I've got a pile of needles there to choose from. But so far it seems to work out really well. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions.